The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. In June of 1990, I had the privilege of traveling throughout Europe while performing in several countries. I accompanied the Mona Shores Choir, I directed the Handbell Choir, and I gave organ recitals in St. Petersburg, in Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and the Netherlands. It was a remarkable experience for which I am deeply grateful. At one point during that tour, we took the ferry from Denmark to what was then East Germany. It was just a few days before the borders came down. We made our way to Berlin, and while we were in Berlin, the borders that had divided East from West did come down. During our stay in Berlin, we were also able to chop down our own piece of the infamous Berlin Wall. My own little chunk of that memorable, insidious dividing wall now sits on a bookshelf in my kitchen as a reminder of that trip and our historic experience. When I look at my piece of the Berlin Wall, it reminds me that walls of hostility, whether concrete or metaphoric, are created because of fear and they ultimately divide families communities, and nations, as did the Berlin Wall for so many years. When the Berlin Wall came down and when the borders between East and West Germany dissolved, I had so hoped we as a people were entering a new place in time in the history of the world. However, when we look at the past few years, it seems we cannot learn from history because we now live in a time of epic wall building. Walls that are seen, unseen, figurative, and literal. And it seems we always develop such absurd arguments as we attempt to justify our wall building efforts. We say we build walls because they will keep us safe, because we are afraid or in danger, because we feel threatened, because we have been hurt by others, because we are protecting what is ours and what we have. But guess what? All these justification projects and arguments show no grace, no attempt to understand those considered other, and they serve to create divisions and hostility between people. 
to move beyond this, to learn to live as builders of the household of God and not builders of dividing walls, we must change the way we look at those we consider other. And we can learn something about this in all of today's scripture readings. In our reading from Jeremiah, the prophet gives us a window into his world, one that can enable us to look out upon our world with clearer insight. In a nutshell, things were not good in Jeremiah's world. The shepherds, the rulers of the land, those in charge of leadership at every level throughout the land are not shepherding. The sheep, the people, are scattered. And when the people are scattered, fear and walls of hostility develop. The rulers, whom Jeremiah is addressing, those charged with leading justly and caring for the people, those charged with making sure that no one gets lost, those charged with helping the flock find the green pastures and still waters, those charged with helping the sheep revive their soul and find the right pathway, are not attending to the sheep. In fact, they are destroying the sheep. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God is addressing not just individuals, God is addressing the whole nation, most especially those who hold power of any kind at any level. God is not happy with the state of civic affairs in Israel and Judah. So the God of Jeremiah proclaims these words of judgment, but also some words of hope. He says, Thus says the Lord God, the God of Israel, O you shepherds who have not shepherded, I will attend to your evil doings. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall be any be missing, says the Lord. You see, the people were like sheep in need of a loving, caring, justice-creating shepherd. After pronouncing words of judgment regarding the evil doings of the leaders, Jeremiah speaks of the righteous branch who will be raised up, the one who will reign as king and deal wisely and execute justice and righteousness in the land so that Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell in safety. As Christians, we see Jesus as that righteous branch that's raised up. And when we look at Jeremiah's words, I think we can all look at the past few years of our lives and gain some insight from Jeremiah's words. There is so much in today's readings, and we cannot even begin to cover it all. But as always, these readings speak to us, and they tell us about ourselves. In Ephesians, we hear, hear words addressing two groups engulfed in hostility, the Jewish people and the Gentiles. The Gentiles are getting a little too puffed up, and the writer of Ephesians reminds them that they were once outsiders looking in. They were once strangers to the promises of God. The Greek word used here for outsiders is xenos, as in xenophobia, as in fear of the stranger. You see, they were once considered aliens, those literally alienated, estranged from the commonwealth of Israel. And the Greek word used for this sense of commonwealth is politia, which is about the administration of civic affairs. Think back to the administration of civic affairs Jeremiah addresses. The word used in Ephesians describes how we structure our society together as people, and it is the same root that gives us the word politics. These stories and our stories are so connected. 
They're not stories of something long ago. They are our stories. You see, the writer of Ephesians says the Gentiles, who held a lot of power in that society, were once without hope, without God in the world. And there was hostility, animosity, and enmity between those who were called the circumcision and those who were called the uncircumcision. With these words, we find a little biblical name-calling going on. The uncircumcision. The ultimate, not us. Now just think about this. Who are the not us today? Who are the groups in opposition? Who are the groups engulfed in hostility? Where are the binary groupings of us versus them? When we look back at a reading from Jeremiah, there are the sheep and the shepherds, then and now. We find those at the economic top of the ladder and those who cannot even get on the first rung. There's management and worker, citizen and undocumented, black and white, men and women, gay and straight, politician and constituent, Republican and Democrat, liberal and conservative, urban and rural, advocates of gun control and advocates of gun rights. There are the socially elite and those who don't know what silverware to use when they get past the fork, knife, and spoon. There are Christian, Jew, and Muslim. There are people of faith and professed atheists. Quite honestly, we could go on and on and on and on and on. Doesn't it kind of make you long for just two, the circumcision and the uncircumcision? We can find so many ways to slice and dice the world into the us and the not us. The us versus them. And when we do this, we always continue building dividing walls it can really be despairing. However, we can only build walls between us and others if that is all we see, someone who is other. That which is not, not me, not us, not one of us. As long as we define everything and everyone else in the world as not ours and not us, we will continue to build dividing walls, create supposed enemies, and throw bombs, both metaphorically and literally. But if we can see others as Jesus the Good Shepherd sees all others, if we can see with the kind of compassion that he has, as we are told in today's gospel reading, a compassion that literally turns his stomach over, if we can see others with that kind of compassion, with love for those we see, as the Greek word describes Jesus' compassion in today's gospel, we will not be able to build walls that divide. If we see the names, the hearts, the lives of those that struggle just as we struggle, and if we see God's face in all others, then we cannot make the other less than us, less than God's precious children, because you see all people are God's precious children, whether we want to believe it or not. People of God, yes, we do need to build But instead of building walls that divide, we can build together. We can build to strengthen lives, build to serve, and build to love others, all others. And by that, loving all others, I mean right now, get your vaccination if you have not done it. That's one way to show your love for your neighbor. 
The writer of Ephesians tells us you are no longer strangers and aliens. You are citizens and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. That's our identity. We are a dwelling place for God. People of God. Christ is our peace. Christ has broken down the dividing walls of hostility between us. And we are called to live into this truth. And if you will notice Deb's shirt, the shirt she's wearing, I'm going to paraphrase, paraphrase this today. Tear down the dividing walls and build a longer, bigger table. Amen.